Hey, what's up everybody? It's Richie here and we are back on the world just to show you a couple of things about this villager breeder right here. Now when I made it in the last episode, I got a bunch of questions as to how it works and how to build it. And instead of doing a tutorial for this build, since there are a million tutorials out there for the villager breeders and all of them are basically the same, I'm just going to explain what makes a working infinite villager breeder and how to do it yourself. So the start of this entire build is right down here. There's a villager standing right there in that pit with six doors. Now he doesn't actually have to be in a pit. You can have a villager with six doors either above or below your build. It has to be, I think, seven blocks below or seven blocks above. I think you can push six, but you don't really want to. And basically what he's doing is sitting right there and creating a village. Now, a couple of things. First off, you have to have blocks on top of the doors and you have to have more blocks on one side than the other. That's because the way um, houses are detected, essentially, is by detecting more light on one side than the other. So one side has to be exposed to natural light, and if all sides are exposed to natural light, one of them has to have a farther overhang than the other. If you're building this underground, you are going to need a tunnel to light. So just dig a three wide tunnel just like this and cap the top off with glass. And whatever you do, do not cap the top off with leaves because that will break your build as I found out in the last episode. Now, what Mr. Lonely Villager right here is doing is actually very cool. When he detects these doors, he creates a village in a 64 block sphere all around him. And he also sends a message that he needs to breed because he thinks he's the only one. And the reason he thinks he's the only one is because he only detects other villagers up and down a few blocks. If other villagers are way above him or way below him, or just really a little above him or a little below him, he will have trouble detecting them. He won't see them. And because of that, we can have as many villagers up on this layer as we want with him still thinking and still sending the signal that the villagers all need to breed. Now, in terms of the breeding system, this is where you get the most variation. That door setup is basically the same for the entire time. And there are a lot of things you can do here, but what I like to do is just make a field, put either carrots or potatoes on it, and then have one side right here with trapdoors all open just like this. The reason they're closed right now is I'm trying to build up the number of villagers in here so that it'll work faster. But we have, we have a setup open like this with a water stream going out and eventually babies will just run straight off this edge and fall down into the water. It's, it's really cool and it's really simple. The reason we're using trapdoors, if you haven't seen it already, is because villagers see trapdoors as a full block, whether they're open or closed. They don't differentiate. And then, of course, we have a line of glass right here to prevent the big villagers from falling down. And that's it. That's actually our farm. Now, you do need one brown-coated villager. It doesn't matter what this, uh, this little apron he's wearing is, but he needs to be brown in base color because those villagers are the only ones that will harvest crops. And then you basically just need any other random villager for this guy to breed with and you're all set. So you need three villagers to start this thing rolling. And that that is actually about it for how the villager breeder works. Now there are other ways you can get this to work. It doesn't just have to be a self-farming method because this one is actually a little bit slow. The alternative to this is trapping villagers all inside of one block together where you give them some food and they reproduce very very rapidly. I've seen some that are like 100 villagers an hour, which is more villagers than I would ever need. Like once you fill up your trading hall, it's just overflow and you have no clue what to do. Though I suppose those designs can be turned on and off, so they're a little easier to handle. Oh, if you do want to turn a design like this off, all you have to do is either break the doors or block light to the doors. So right here, if I were to break these, uh, 
these trap doors, which I just have here for decoration, and place three stone blocks right here, the whole villager breeder would stop working. And in case you don't have any common sense, make sure to light up all of this area completely and make sure that no zombies can ever get inside because zombies really, really love villagers. And that's, that's how you build your own farm. I'm not going to go over the various designs that people use. You can Google those, but that's how it works. And that's how I did it, sort of on the fly without looking up anything or thinking about anything. It's really not that hard, and it's really fun to get a villager breeding breeder running really quick. But unfortunately, guys, that's it for today. If you like this video, please make sure to hit that like button. I really hope it helped you. And until the next time, blah, it's very early in the morning. I cannot talk. This has been Richie. I think I say I can't talk in every single video. And I'm out. I'll see ya.